going on guys? It's your boy Cecil here, bringing you guys a video here today, bringing you guys a Photoshop tour how to create your own abstract explosion designed to titles. You, you guys already know the deal, I don't know my titles until I actually make the video. So as you guys can see, I have this really fun, and I, I'm not even kidding, Like this is possibly one of, I, this is probably my top five of random tutorials just gone right in my opinion. I just think this looks freaking awesome. Like the sort of depth, or not really depth, I would say the sort of layering I got going on with the backing and how just like it just looks so damn good. And then the text itself was actually a 3D render done in Cinema 4D. It was a crappy render, and I was like, let's just see what I can do with this really crappy render. I was just I went for a different idea and I just found this really cool filter, and then all of a sudden it started just building. And I was just like, yo, I think I have an idea here. So if you want to see the render, boom, right? So this is what I had in the beginning, thank god I didn't use anything like this. So I was like, of course, this is not the standard of the 3D I would feel like is necessary on my channel, correct? So I was just like, let's just see what happens if I try to make this 3D, or excuse me, 2D. And then I came up with just like, the, it just it, it just happened. Honestly, I don't know how it happened. So that's what I'm going to be teaching you guys today. So two likes on the video, equals a secret down below, which will be the PSD of this video. And as always, guys, if you have not subscribed to me yet, you probably should. And if you guys, you know, maybe if you want to leave a like just because you want to leave a like, I, I love you that much as well. So hope you guys enjoy your Friday. We'll get into this video. We'll start off with Cinema 4D. And then we'll head into Photoshop. And then, of course, that's the vid in the video. So yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Not later, but I'll talk to you guys in a second. Yep, we're gonna go to Cinema, we're gonna go to Cinema 4D. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's go ahead and just hop into Cinema 4D right now, and we're just gonna get this thing going. So this is the render that I actually had in the beginning. So if you guys can see, it says abstract design on this render here. Uh, we're just gonna hide this and just get to it. Like, but just remember, just remind yourself that you don't have to go crazy with the Cinema 4D stuff. Trust me, just do as simple things as possible. Even you don't even have to look at this part. Just make a really weird render and then see what happens, right? That's pretty much what I did. So I'm gonna hide this. I'm gonna show you guys how I did mine really quickly. Very, very simple stuff. So mo graph, mo text for the text, of course. And right away, I'm gonna change my depth to 112 or it's 110, that's fine. Uh, alignment, put it in the middle. And then my font that I used, I believe, was called the Outbox ST. So I'm gonna change this towards abstract. And now we're just gonna go ahead and press Control C, V on our keyboard to make a duplicate of the actual uh, text here. I'm gonna move this so you can see. Making a duplicate of it, moving it forward a little bit. Changes to the word design this time. Right. And right before I do this, I'm gonna go back to one, the one that says abstract. And I'll hide this one for you guys for a second. To where it says abstract, go to caps, change your start and end points to fillet cap, and then put them all on one. So one for the steps and radius for both of them. That will give this little sort of a rounder edge on the abstract word. And then when we go back to the word design here, it'll have more of a sort of a, a non edgy, it'll, or excuse me, it'll be more sharp than these. This is more rounded, right? So I'm just gonna. Uh, just go ahead and do this. That was like a really. I'm just gonna. Uh, duh, duh. <laughs> Why the hell did I do that? Um, we're just gonna move this back though, right? Put that pretty much in the center. That's fine. We're gonna actually shrink this depth a little bit more than what it needs to be. It needs to be like what 25, 30. Let's just say 30. Move this back a little bit more, and then we'll just call that our render, and that looks good. That's fine. And we're just gonna put this a little bit bigger. Why the hell not? Okay. Perfect. So right now we have our basic set, uh, our text set up. What we're going to do now is the platonic. So what I mean by platonic is these things back here and what the render is showing here is these really weird balls that are, it just gave it more of an effect or more sort of, I guess, more than just the text itself, right? I wanted something else to go around it. Very simple stuff here, by the way, but it also gave it a very dope sort of style. It, lo it looks really dope and I love, it almost looks like Plexus in, a way, uh, Plexus in a way as well. So that's always why I love that stuff. So I'm gonna show you guys how I did that really quickly. Uh, go to the cubes tab and go to platonic, which is right here, this nice little polygon. I'll move it up here for you guys. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold Alt on our keyboard and then select the word platonic. We're gonna select the word platonic, hold Alt on your keyboard, go to MoGraph cloner. What this will do while holding on your keyboard, it'll put the platonic straight inside your cloner, and that's the sort of effect that you got going on here now. So you have a three stack of a platonic. We're gonna click on the word cloner, and then go to where it says your ob uh, your object, and change your mode from linear to radial. And the reason for this is we're gonna have basically a circle of platonics, and what we're gonna do, and we can probably put our count down to like three. <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our render, or excuse me, our radius, and just lower this down. You can use your scroll wheel if you guys want to, and basically you see these little things coming in? We want that to pop out as much as possible and get this really weird sort of abstract ball. Now, I probably got this style back in the day when I did my meta ball effect. I don't know if, how many of you guys even remember that, but that's kind of how I'm going off here. And then pretty much when you're done with this part here, 
you're gonna basically go ahead and go to where it says uh, or actually before we do that put some color in this the reason why we want to put some color in these little platonics here is you can see this here why there's basically like a you can see through the platonic here is because there's two different colors that way when the effect was applied it will obviously distinguish the two different colors and then give you a different effect for each of that sort of tone so we're gonna do that really quickly and the way to do that to sort of select these different sides is you have to make the actual platonic editable so what we're gonna do is we're gonna press scene our keyboard on the platonic here and we're just gonna go ahead and just add in blue like oops before we do that let's select the faces also to select the faces change your mode from here to these little uh this little front facing little selection piece here i'm like oops i didn't mean to move them you want to basically select them by holding shift on each one clicking on a couple of them we'll click on the one back here something like that as we have some different colors there we go and then you'll see the it'll be orange if it's highlighted and selected so what you want to do is you want to take your your material whatever one you use it is it can be something you just made just now take a blue or whatever color you're using and then just throw it on those selections and oops make sure i actually have it selected please throw it on the selection throw it on the selection what are you doing the selection we'll have to make this editable too probably there we go probably had to make the actual cloner editable as well that way i can throw on the selection yep so just make your cloner also editable and then that way it'll, it'll get rid of that little you just saw me have a little bit of trouble there so i'm gonna go ahead and just put a little bit more blue there and i'll call that fine that looks perfectly dope and that's just kind of how i went so, so two separate colors inside this cloner and we're good so the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the bend tab here and then we're gonna go to where it says explosion we're gonna take this explosion throw it right down uh on all through this platonics here just throw it right there and then we're gonna take the strength and just put it onto like two and then now we have this really random sort of affecting going on here that looks good we're pretty much almost done with this what i'm gonna do now is i'm basically gonna just fit these right i'm gonna click on the cloner fit these right behind the text we'll, we'll, we'll probably switch it up just a little bit but i just want to put at least three of them around the text you can put as many as you guys want you don't have to use this you can use a different shape you can use whatever the hell you guys know how to do in cinema 4d i guarantee you it will look cool when you throw it inside photoshop promise you that because this obviously this render is not like a it's not a freaking you know a showstopper or anything like that so right now i'm just gonna quickly go back to this one make this a little bit more bigger than the other one Put this behind this thing here and i'll say this looks pretty good so far it's just it's it's a random render right just make sure you keep reminding yourselves that so pretty much now what we're gonna do is i'm just gonna close these groups really really quickly i'm also gonna group everything for a second so alt g on your keyboard and we're gonna take our rotation tool here we're just gonna rotate it give it a little bit of an angle correct let's just do that perfect and also i want to see the depth here so we can actually get that sort of depth we have going on here as well so what you're gonna do now is you're gonna select on that platonics these three cloners here excuse me uh group those together and then press Control c Control v to make a duplicate of them that way you have a t uh, another set of copy right what you're going to do is you want to go to where it says your atom array tab and then you want to hold alt of course throw it inside that null it will automatically do that if you're holding alt change your cylinder radius and your sphere radius to both one and put that in just like or even 0.5 actually one might be a little bit too much so 0.5 for both of them there we go and they have this really skinny little sort of uh let me just render this out really quickly like a little bit of a line going through and sort of also guiding your eye around the actual edge of the platonic and that'll also give you these sort of lines here which look pretty freaking awesome as well so remind you to do that as well and then pretty much the last but not least little finishing touch is make a duplicate of your text so you can basically control click on both of them alt g to uh, group them together control c v to make a duplicate of them and then you want to go ahead and go to your explosion tab again throw them right below the text of the second copy and then put your strength up to as much as you want maybe like four or five and then we're just going to take where does it say the word design at let's just go where it says design which i believe is this one put the blue material on that one there and then pretty much you are done so you're going to render this out i'm going to go into photoshop and we're going to get that thing going over there so yes my render is not all that it's not that crazy it doesn't look appealing inside of cinema 4d or even like probably to work with <coughs> excuse me probably to work with but realistically the sort of uh, effect that i have going on here is these little the simple explosion not even nitro blast anything like that i want pieces i want sort of random abstract things to come out to give myself a better sort of flat when i put a filter on it this little flat it's just fun look to it you can't tell me that doesn't look doesn't look cool right so that's the reason why i picked and chose the explosion tab the platonics and the sort of two different layer of text and the depth those are all reasons so uh, i can kind of get this really dope effect inside of photoshop which we'll do and uh yeah so i'm gonna run this thing out and then we're gonna get back to you guys in a second so uh yeah see you guys in a second 
All right, guys, so the render is now fully completed. I actually did end up changing a few different things, as you can probably see from my original sort of thing that I had going on here. Um, One is I moved my first one in the middle sort of further back. I moved this one sort of closer to the left-hand side. I also gave myself a, a different font. I actually used the uh, Built Tilting uh, RG, which is regular. And also put a nice little blue sort of backing here basically all the different things that i sort of showed you guys already but i just added a few more things so nothing crazy at all i went ahead and put this in a, uh in photoshop already and uh yeah we're good to go and we're ready to start this thing off so let's go ahead and get this thing going so once you throw your 3d render right in here you want to go ahead and just put go to filter right go to filter gallery and the effect that basically makes your sort of 3d render within cinema 40 that looks like crap or whatever look better is now called note paper it's called note paper and the first thing you want to do for your uh settings is change it to zero zero for your graininess and grain grainness i know all right english um and then relief also to zero so basically make sure those, these are two at zero and the only thing you're uh, really working with is called image balance so as you can see here uh, image balance if you just basically look at i'm looking at the blue right now look at the blue don't mind the red look at the blue and say to yourself like where do i want like my sort of text to look like what do I want my text to look like i think i want to see a little bit more of the word design in the middle here uh maybe i want to say to myself i want to see a lot more go to the right hand side so basically if you want to see more of your stuff so in my case in the beginning of the uh, video uh, the video if you look at the, uh, the example and you're like i can't really see the text so much move yourself more to the left hand side of the image balance but for now this looks pretty good to me i'm gonna go ahead and press ok and i'm gonna call this a day there so i'm gonna go ahead and make sure i rasterize my layer really quickly for the example and i'm gonna go ahead and go to filter color range and then select my blue color here press ok and then what this will do is select all the blue within this render here Go to your rectangle marquee tool, which is your M and your keyboard for the shortcut. Press M and your keyboard, of course, if, if you want to put it on the shortcut. Right click, layer via cut, and that's what we're going to do. And then basically, as you can see, if you guys want to see what it looks like like that, I mean, maybe you think that looks cool. Maybe you want to try that out. Who the hell knows? Maybe it's a different style I want to go for, but I like this. And it's sort of like bare bones. looks really good. And pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and double click on this. What's up? And I'm going to go to uh, color overlay. I'm going to change this color to the filter that I have here which is five or excuse me the hex code is ff1f4a and pretty much when you got that going you want to press ok press ok again and i'm just going to also change this to uh this for a second as well and pretty much you're going to have this i'm going to ratchet this layer i'm going to call this the word text i don't need this anymore because we don't need that anymore basically and what i'm going to do is i'm going to press ctrl j to make a duplicate of this text here and i'm going to make this text that i made a duplicate of white the way i'm going to do that the fastest way that i know is control you and your keyboard and then put your lightness all the way up to 100. otherwise you can just double click on it got a color overlay make it white but that's you know that's whatever yo you just rather just do this right so i'm gonna put this right below the text and we're just gonna call this we're gonna call this backing right put this all the way to my top left in my corner of the actual sort of banner design you got going on here whatever your dimensions are by the way hold alt will put your mouse mode in sort of in a duplication mode and then you just want to click and drag and then basically sort of fill your banner out the space of the actual word abstract or whatever words you actually use right and i'm going to just click on all this so i'm gonna shift click on everything Control e to merge it all together and then change my blend mode from normal to overlay and i'm also going to flip my text so if it's kind of like i don't know if it's like a hidden rule or something like that but my text here whatever text you're saved mine says abstract right going left from right i don't want my background to also be the same exact uh reading from left to right so i'm going to basically control t and i'm just going to flip this horizontal so it's not you know so noticeable as it's the same exact thing from left and right so people really won't really re realize it that it's probably backwards but it'll just add some stuff for you guys it'll add sort of like the style that we're going for so it looks pretty good right now and we're good to go so another new layer above this and we're going to use let's just use this pink right and we're just going to click a couple times it's just like one two three times and we're just going to put this on a color dodge and we're going to lower the opacity down to like i don't know i don't know why did i say like i don't know uh maybe like 50 40 percent let's just put it on 50 for now and i'm gonna press ctrl u and i'm gonna make this pink a different color to a nice blue maybe somewhere around this and we're just going to be using something like that that looks fine we'll just leave it for like that for now we can always change it in the future uh, and pretty much once you've done this we're gonna add our first set of basically color corrections right which is gonna be brightness and contrast as well as vibrance so i'm gonna do that right now so brightness and contrast the settings that i have currently is 1060 and then for my vibrance i believe it is uh 80 10 so 80 10 and then right now the one thing i want you to make sure you guys do is make sure your colors are as followed you have a pink for the actual foreground color and a sort of grayish uh, i didn't even tell you this color by the way the background color that i actually used was hex code 161 d26 so if you guys want to say the same exact blue uh as i have so the reason why i want to tell you guys to do that 
is because the next few steps you're going to be doing is you're going to make sure you want to have those colors selected. So I'm going to go ahead and just shift click on all this stuff, control J, control E, basically want to make a copy of everything that you've already done. And what you want to go ahead and do is you want to change this to multiply, right? And we're going to lower our passes down to like 50% or so. And then we're going to go to filter gallery. And then we're just going to go to half tone pattern. And the reason why I told you to change your colors to pink and that blue is because of course, as you can see, the background's pink and the text is now blue because of the uh, color co uh, color codes that you have over here on this left-hand side. So I'm gonna take my contrast, move this up a little bit, make it nice and dark. Let me like something like right here or something like that, right? And your halftone pattern is basically those halftones like on like, I don't know, like comic book or something like that. Um, if you guys wanna change your pattern type, it's right here. If you wanna change the circles, I don't know if, I'm gonna keep it on dots though, I like that. And if you wanna change your size, put it to like two or something like that, maybe. Maybe, I think anything after two is a little bit too high. Uh, so I'm just gonna put mine on two, right? Press OK, and I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it on 50%. And I'm also gonna move my text a little bit to the right and like down, just so I can see. Is because basically this is acting like an overlay sort of pattern. And if I move my text, you can now see that it's sort of off centered here, and now you have the half tone sort of leaking around the actual little pattern going on on the inside. So right now this looks pretty freaking dope, and I'm pretty happy how this is coming out. So at this very moment now we're gonna actually add. I think this is kind of the hardest part. So of course we're gonna um, excuse me, Control J, Control E, everything, everything again, and can go to filter, uh, filter gallery, and we're gonna go to where is it at? Brush stroke. Uh, cross hatch that's what it's called so my settings are as followed 30 for the stroke length seven for the sharpness and then one for the strength you can change this up as much as you guys want I'm gonna press ok and the reason why I said this is the hardest part is because this is basically how you make sort of the rest of the color on your banner design so if your render mine is sort of really pretty much front facing I wish I kind of turned it a little bit more but for the you'll probably you'll pretty much see what I'm talking about but what I want to do is I'm gonna take this to the bottom left corner I'm gonna put this from normal to exclusion, and I'm gonna go ahead and take my eraser. Uh, if you want to use this, you can use this as well. The sort of uh, how do you call this? The masking thing again, the masking selection, and you you would use your black brush for this then to erase, just like so. We're gonna erase this, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just duplicate it. Basically, hold Alt, move it over. I'm gonna erase this on this side here as well. Right, move it over again, erase this, move it over one more time. And then we'll just leave that as that. So I'm gonna merge all this stuff together and we're gonna put this back on exclusion. And I'm gonna basically duplicate this. So hold Alt, Shift, move it up, Control T to free transform it, and then right click, flip vertical. That way we can get the same exact side that's on this side on the top as well. This looks pretty good so far. I'm down for this. All right, so now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically another duplicates. I'll put like two more. So one on the bottom, we're gonna erase this up top though. Right, and we're gonna do one more for the actual, like sort of like fill this entire thing in. So then I'm gonna merge these two things together, which is the two that are right here. Boom, boom, right? Merge them together with Control E, put them back on exclusion. I'm gonna go ahead and use my nice little masking layer here, masking selection, take my black brush, and sort of erase around here where the text is, of course. And I'm gonna lower my passing down right now, and I'm gonna erase around where the text is, and here we go. And the reason why I lower my opacity on this is because the next color correction we're going to be doing when we use another color balance or even a uh, black and white when we change some colors and stuff, this pink will register as a different color, this one in the background here. So we'll make that come out a different way. So right now, this is perfectly fine. This looks good. And we're down to continue. So once you sort of have this part going on, you want to go ahead and just add a couple more stuff in. Now, if you kind of want to add a more uh, like color in here, why the hell not? We'll add some more in here right now. Let's just add some like that, some color dodge. Or put on linear dodge add, lower that passage down just a little bit there. There we go, to get more color in there. And then we're gonna go ahead and go to vibrance, just like so. We'll put the vibrance on 40, and then we'll put it on four for the saturation. And if you guys ever need to, just know that you can always fix your color corrections and go back. But this is sort of the how I did them, so if you wanna copy them, go for it. Um, I'm gonna put this from 0.5 for my cyan to red, my magenta to green, I'm gonna put this on 50. And then my yellow to blue, I'm gonna also put this on negative five. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to click on the blue, or excuse me, the white uh, thumbnail of the color balance. Take my black brush here and then just erase around just so I can get two kind of nice little color tones going on here, right? As you can see, looks pretty good. Just add a little bit of green. It kind of adds a little bit of green in it. It looks pretty dope to me. Also, I might want to like erase the hell out of this because that looks nasty. There we go. All right. And then we're going to add another brightness and contrast. We're going to put it on 20 and then 70 for the brightness and contrast. And then uh, this is what I was talking about. The black and white is the last sort of color correction I'm going to be using for this. And then what we're going to do, 
put this on multiply immediately right so this is where you kind of get that really dope dark tone now what i was telling you is these different colors here are going to register uh basically a, a lot of different colors on your actual banner design so you're going to take one and move it up and say to yourself do i want this up or not so i'm going to say this i don't really want that too much farther up the yellow i don't really need to work with that green's not doing anything for me the scion oop i'm getting some more color there i like that the blue here no i want to keep that down the magenta there we go that magenta is bringing out the uh the colors in the background here and this looks badass guys all right all right we're pretty much good with that i think that's good for the for that part there we're gonna add some more color again let's go ahead and add a nice little pink again we're just gonna select the color with pink and we're gonna click a couple times just like so linear dodge add why the hell not lower the opacity down yes yes okay curve let's add a curve in here and we're just gonna put this a nice little simple s curve Boom, just like that. And then last but not least, we're going to add a levels in here, which is just kind of just to get our blacks a little bit more like sort of even. So take this one, move it up to two, just like so. you can see what it did. Kind of added a lot more darker blacks, which looks pretty dope in my opinion. And we'll just move this over here as well. And what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and just click on this, uh, this white thumbnail again, take our brush and wherever you think it needs to be a little bit lighter, use this as sort of your, like your lighting tool, which will look pretty dope. And I think that looks pretty badass as well. All right, and I I think we're almost done. I think the last thing I gotta do here, double click my text here and put a nice little brightness and contrast so it stands out a bit. Not brightness and contrast, excuse me. Dark shadow, I don't know why the hell I said brightness and contrast. But, uh, and then just let's move around with this. And then inner glow maybe, put that on white. And then put this on overlay. And I think we're pretty much done guys. So as you can see, this is a very, very fun, very, I guess like working with a backing and then sort of get a nice little colors, I don't know, like sort of uh, layering. It just looks super fun to do. And I honestly thought this is probably one of my best when it comes to just sort of exploring Photoshop. So maybe this tutorial is probably like one of, one of your favorites. Who the hell knows? Hopefully you guys did enjoy though. Do not forget to leave a like, guys. Tune in likes on the video equals a secret down below. Uh, do not forget to follow me on Twitter, at SysFHQ. Also, do not forget to check out my Selfie, selfie.com slash SysFHQ. For any premiums and packs, it's always $5. And uh, yeah, dudes. I really enjoyed this. I really think it looks pretty freaking dope. I want to see if I can just get a better color as well, color balance. I don't know. It all depends on what you guys want to do. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Oh yeah. Sesso HQ out. Peace.